The following program has been brought to you in part by Sennheiser and the Airline Pilots Association. Tired of waiting for takeoff? MIT researchers are on the case. Alpha's president heads to Wall Street. Are you a pro at packing everything in your carry-on? We'll tell you how much it's costing the government. Plus, what self-service program you can now find at one airport. These stories and more coming up in this edition of The Flight Deck. Hello, I'm Sharon Varab. Welcome to The Flight Deck. According to Fox News, travelers can now tag their own bags at self-service kiosks. American Airlines is running a six-month trial with the new program at the Austin, Texas airport. Passengers are not required to use the new service, but the airline hopes it will speed up the check-in process. While American is the first airline to implement this service in the U.S., the report said that Delta Airlines and Air Canada will soon follow suit. The city of Chicago struck a $1.17 billion deal with United and American Airlines that gives the O'Hare Modernization Program the green light. According to the U.S. Department of Transportation, the first phase of the program includes two new runways, a runway extension, and a new air traffic control tower. When the program is complete, O'Hare will have eight modern runways, reducing flight delays and improving efficiency for travelers throughout the country. ALPA President Captain Lee Moak delivered the association's views on the financial state of the industry at the J.P. Morgan Aviation, Transportation and Defense Conference in New York. Attended by airline managements and financial analysts, ALPA was the only voice representing airline employees there, providing the association with the opportunity to share our perspective with influential industry stakeholders. Researchers at MIT found that holding airplanes at the gate just four minutes longer cuts taxi times by 20% and fuel consumption by up to 20 gallons per aircraft. Testing their theory at Boston's Logan Airport, the researchers explored how modifying ground operations could reduce aircraft fuel burn and engine emissions. Even though airline pilots don't get paid until they push back from the gates, the MIT study says a majority of participating pilots indicated that they would be willing to wait at the gate if their takeoff position could be guaranteed. The study, sponsored by the FAA and the EPA, could save airlines money while satisfying both weary travelers and environmental concerns. The Department of Homeland Security says that carry-on baggage is costing the federal government $260 million a year. Secretary Janet Napolitano explained that more people are carrying their luggage with them to avoid checked bag fees, resulting in longer lines that require more manpower. We need to be able to pay for this additional security that TSA uh, must have. Uh, and if we don't have the ability to, to have a security fee, which, by the way, has not been adjusted since 2002, um, that is a, at least a $600 million bite um, that we have to eat somewhere. And as you can tell uh, from my opening statement, uh, you know, everywhere you hit in this department, is, it's going to have an operational impact. The department is requesting a total of $57 billion for 2012, which would allow DHS to pay for more equipment and hire more security screeners. Labor leaders adopted several policy statements in March at the Transportation Trades Department meeting, putting additional pressures on legislators to get into gear. On the aviation front, ALPA President Captain Lee Moak addressed several strategic items in the statements, including the safe transport of lithium batteries, making it a federal crime to shine a laser at an aircraft, and strongly encouraging Congress to pass the FAA reauthorization bill. Are you an airline pilot just recovering from surgery? After the break, Dr. Snyder shares what you should consider before climbing back into the cockpit. From the first time I boarded a commercial plane as its pilot, I've embraced the responsibility I have to the safety of my passengers and crew. And I have the best flight gear, even the headset, certified for commercial duty. It lets me concentrate on the task at hand, making this the safest flight my passengers will ever have. 
the feature-packed HMEC 26 provides long wearing comfort and more than 18 dB of noise reduction. Try the HMEC 26 on your next flight and hear the difference for yourself. Hi, I'm Peggy from Silver Spring, Maryland, and this is Bogey. And we'd like to ask a pilot, what airport do you find the most difficult to take off and land from? Peggy, first of all, I want to reassure you that a professional airline pilot would never operate out of an airport that we considered unsafe. But we're very well trained and we operate in all types of conditions, whether it's nights or day or bad weather. One of the things that I would consider to be a difficult airport is perhaps one in mountainous terrain or where the weather is bad or the runway is very short. Now that's challenging, but we're trained very well to do that, whether in an aircraft simulator or through many years of experience like I've had. When an airline pilot faces a major illness or surgery, going back to work isn't always that simple. There are regulations to consider that your doctor might not know about. Here's Dr. Snyder, ALPA's doctor on call, with a few pointers. When considering returning to flying, Think about the routine and emergency duties you may be called on to perform and how your health will be affected by a long multi-day trip, hotels, reduced quality of rest, carrying baggage, and all of the other normal activities for a pilot on a trip. After surgery, you should gather all of your operative reports and your final clearance from your physician for reporting to the FAA at your next physical exam. If you can, schedule your physical exam before the surgery. Even with all of these precautions, some surgeries are performed for disqualifying conditions, and you must be cleared by the FAA even if you've been cleared by your physician and you're feeling fine. Cancer is a common example. Here are some rules of thumb you can follow. Receiving stitches does not disqualify you from operating an aircraft, as long as the stitches don't interfere with the safe operation of the aircraft. Non-narcotic pain relievers are generally allowed by the FAA with very few exceptions. Although splints and braces aren't necessarily disqualifying if you can perform all duties, visible ones can make airline staff and passengers uncomfortable. Anesthesia from screening exams, such as endoscopies, doesn't necessarily disqualify a pilot for more than 24 hours, assuming there were no complications. Surgery for any type of cancer, except non-melanoma skin cancer, requires clearance from the FAA prior to returning to work. For more guidance, you can contact Alpazera Medical Office at 303-341-4435. As always, all calls are strictly confidential. We checked in again with Dr. Snyder on how this applies to our Canadian pilots. He says that the Canadian Handbook for Civil AMEs says malignancies will be assessed on an individual basis, but any active ongoing chemotherapy is disqualifying. Surgery for cancer is also disqualifying, pending healing and review by Transport Canada Medical Authorities. On a lighter note, meet FedEx Captain Mark Danielson's precious cargo. His name is Tucker. He's eight years old and weighs almost 4,000 pounds. Mark said he was a hippo in need of a new home, and FedEx donated their services to move him from Topeka to the San Francisco Zoo. Mark and First Officer Brian Donner made certain that Tucker arrived safely, taking special precautions for their precious cargo along the way. They requested a constant descent into Oakland to make it easier on Tucker's ears, and used the full length of the runway to slow down gradually when landing. Mark says Tucker was the perfect passenger. We hope he's enjoying his new home in San Francisco. To read Mark's full commentary, just visit our website and click on Tucker's Story. If you or someone you know goes above and beyond for others, either in your community or in the cockpit, we'd like to know. Please email us at flightdeck at alpa.org. We on the Flight Deck would like to congratulate Paul Peace, who was randomly selected from the correct entries of last month's Watch and Win contest. Paul will now be entered into the grand prize drawing along with five other winners. Now today's question is, how much money is carry-on luggage costing the federal government? Visit our website at flightdeck.alpa.org to submit the answer for a chance to win a Sennheiser headset valued at $850. Thank you for watching the Flight Deck. If you have any feedback about this episode or future stories you would like us to cover, please let us know at flightdeck.alpa.org. Thanks again, and I'll see you next month here on the Flight Deck.